When asked the question, who is the most influential figure in the sport of motocross over the last decade, most would produce a short list of riders that have won multiple championships. But one could argue that the actual answer is a former professional cyclist who ironically has never raced a motorcycle. His proponents say he trains racers into champions, and his critics say those he trained were already champions. When I look at 17 years I've been doing this, there's been other guys I've helped that have won championships, but not at the consistency ratio as those three. Regardless of opinion, Alden Baker has proved time and again that his program in Claremont, Florida simply works. Roger DeCoster wanted me to train with Alden, and we could see right away in 2015, uh, I was able to be more confident and stronger in Supercross, and I got second outdoors, so it was a great season. I always have had confidence in my skill, but I've never really had confidence in the type of training programs. Now that you're getting better at this, Jason, try and move it a little bit forward, yeah. I was nervous when he went to Alden, because I was like, Jason, I kind of know how you are, you know, and I kind of know how this is, and this might not turn out well, and he's like, if I commit to something, I'll do it. For a motocross career, I think it's bad for you'd have a bad week and then come back and isolate yourself. I think that's a good thing that we have going there is we have each other. Even though I'm trying to kick Mars butt on the weekend, I still come back and we're still friends and we're still able to help each other. Well, the first thing when I look at a rider and I kind of get an idea of how much heart they have, is that something I can't train? When I see that they want to commit to the program in Florida, that also gives me an idea on what they are wanting to get out of it. Two thousand seventeen is possibly Alden's most challenging season. His current roster of athletes have yet to win a four hundred and fifty title, mostly due to the fact that their training partner of the last three years, Ryan Dungey, has consumed the lion's share of recent championships. Now, Ryan's sudden retirement has created a vacuum that can be interpreted either as a loss or an opportunity. Those times do come to an end, and I'm not going to look stressed about it, but I do believe that's a challenge on its own and one that I kind of like. Part of me wants to say like me and Ryan are really good friends and kind of bummed to not have my training partner there, but at the same time I've gotten 14 fourth places in the last two years. That's a lot of bonus money that he's taken away from me. I think it just clicked this year that before he was looking at Ryan like I want to be like him and now he's more like well I think I can be better than him. Mathilde has been by Marvin's side since they met during his amateur days in France. After he won his second world championship in 2010, the two left their families and comforts of home to take a gamble on a career in the United States. Coming to America, I feel like I started from zero again. I feel like I still have a lot to accomplish in the sport. Right now, you know, with all the hard work and, and the pressure of winning championships, I've never been in that position. I came off, good job. The intensity looked good too. With two rounds completed, Marvin has proved to himself and Alden Baker that he is capable of filling the void Dungey left behind. But for Jason, this season could not have started any worse. Just out of the start shoot of the 450cc moto number one. Not even a lap into the season opener, the roost at Hangtown split open Jason's eye which resulted in seven stitches and a 25-point deficit. That is big news. So Jason Anderson on his way in, he was definitely a contender. Although Jason was able to rebound at Glen Helen the following week with a second overall, round three will be held at a venue that has plagued him throughout his career. 6,000 feet above sea level, at the base of the Rocky Mountains in Colorado, lies Thunder Valley Raceway. The beauty of the landscape masquerades the havoc inflicted on the racers' lungs as they starve for oxygen. None other is affected by this deficiency more than Jason Anderson, who suffers from high-altitude pulmonary edema, a life-threatening illness caused when fluid leaks from blood vessels into the lungs. Jason was unable to complete the motos last season. Is that Anderson, I believe, who's going slow on that uphill? The bike looks from the outside okay. I'm a little confused right now. 
What started the problem was he was born at an altitude and some situation with the development of his lungs was affected when he was a kid. For Anderson, round three is a matter of survival. But for his training partner, Marvin Muscan, Colorado will be spent defending the red plate and points lead from Kawasaki's Eli Tomac. For him to have the red plate, it's good, you know. It gives him a lot of confidence, like, just want to keep it. Last week's win pushed Marvin to the top of the podium of the 450 class, a lifelong dream the Muscans have been building towards since they met at the age of 15. We've been dating since he was in 85, so we were still kids. So I've learned a lot about racing, but I feel like we've learned it together. When I'm at the races in the weekend, you know, my biggest concern is where am I going to find a spot where I can see as much as I can, you know, because he's going to come back and tell me, oh, did you see this? Oh, did you see that? If anything happened, I need to see it. It's pretty intense. I'm not going to lie. It's pretty intense. <laughs> Turn number one. Go, Mom. Go, 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 go. Oh, my goodness. Bikes are everywhere. Marvin Muskin goes down, and Baggett goes down. Muskin is in trouble. He's trying to regroup. Muscat is 26th right now. Great move there from Anderson. He just slides and dices his way from about 6th into 3rd. Muscat has climbed to 15th. That is unbelievable. He, he's gained, like, 15 positions in about a lap and a half. Oh, 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 yeah. And look who's caught Tomac now. Marvin Muscat, who was down on the ground in turn one, has caught his championship rival. He's got it. He stays He's got low. the pass. What a crossover. Went from inside to outside. I would have never, ever imagined that Muscat would go from down on the ground in turn one to potentially adding more points to his points lead on Tomac. Stay on the track, Mark. Come on, that's nice. Oh. Marvin's charge from 38th to fourth place in Moto 1 was among the most impressive 450 outdoor performances of his career. Jason Anderson showed no signs of physical struggle with a career best finish at Thunder Valley in second place. Good job, man. We knew that this one would be a tougher one. For Jason, I think, considering how things went last year here, a really impressive day. I think it almost take it as a win. Marvin and Jason's performances were overshadowed, however, by the emergence of a new championship contender. Blake Baggett has fallen into obscurity in the last few years, but the former 250 motocross champion was the fastest rider in Moto2 and became the day's overall winner. This has to be a dream day. Blake Baggett, his first ever 450 motocross overall victory. I think the coolest part about the whole sport is the ups and the downs came in in the 250 and was somebody and then it just kind of roller coastered right back off to just nobody again and right now I've got things figured out and, and we're, we're, we're climbing we're up there. Baggage closing points too. Well we need to get back and regroup and well, we just get gotta keep yeah, working. Yeah Baggett was on it and was riding phenomenal and it's good to see that, and I think it highlights how competitive that this class is, and we've got to be on our game every weekend, and we've got to make it work. Well, you know, we're leaving Thunder Valley today with a second place overall. Gained two points on the championship. Usually, Thunder Valley is not a good weekend for him, and he actually made it better than what he expected, so. After their journey to their California home, Sundays provide a brief retreat from racing and a rare opportunity for Marvin and Mathilde to preserve friendships and pieces of their culture 5,000 miles from their homeland. When we come home from the track, we always try to get some distractions. So tonight we're having some friends over and I'm just preparing like roasted chicken uh, with some potatoes and green beans and I'm gonna make some apple pies. You know, it's pretty much the only dessert I can do with no sugar added. So hopefully Alden's gonna have some. <laughs> Changing their diet to adhere to Alden's strict regimen pales in comparison to the challenges the Moose Scans have faced in their career. They have overcome the odds for the last 14 years by taking risks and living by the French saying, do not wait for the storm to pass. Instead, learn to dance in the rain.